All right, welcome back to part four of our HTML5 interactive canvas tutorial. What we're going to be doing this time is we're going to look at, quickly look at adding fonts to our project, web safe ones to be precise, timing with uh, date.now, and then creating a frames per second calculator, which depending on where we are when we get there, we might use set interval as well to have it only update on certain frames or after a certain amount of time. Uh, I don't really like set interval though, that's why I'm kind of hesitant to show it to you, but of course it's ultimately your choice if you want to use set interval or not. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to dive straight into it because I'm getting better at these intros. We're going to start off by looking at our CSS up here. And you can get this just by going in here, clicking the CSS, and then just changing pretty much anything on here. And you can grab all your, your fonts here. So if you want to go ahead and add a font that's a web safe font or something that you know is on a lot of computers, just hit comma, space, and it'll give you a list. You can edit your font list if you want to. The ones that automatically pop up, these are all web safe fonts. So no matter where you are, they will be usable. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to stay with Arial or uh, Sans Serif, something, something safe. Uh, ch -ch -ch. We got that in the body as well. Now, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to include a little timer up in the corner that's going to indicate for us the frames per second up here. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say in our mouse position well, where, where should we put this? we want it to give us a number at the end is when we want to draw that so the last thing to get called is going to be the draw squares as we can see here draw squares or we can just include it after that in the mouse position so since it's only updating when we use mouse position, there's no harm in just putting it after here because it's not really a part of draw squares. If anything, we could draw another fo another a, uh, function for it and put it in there. It's really up to us. I'm actually going to go ahead and create another function because that sounds better. So I'm going to say function draw frames per second. I'm going to go ahead and save that, and then I'm going to remember to call it draw frames per second. Save. And I spelled that the same way in both spots. Awesome. So now what we're going to go ahead and do, is that still working? Haven't screwed up anything yet. Is we're going to draw our text. For right now, we're just going to put the intro introduction to what it is and it's just going to say frames per second or FPS whatever we want to so we're going to go ahead and we're going to set this up context.font is the font we're using and we can go ahead and here's where we set all of our properties for our font so I'm going to open and close little Actually, I should be consistent and use quotes here. Let's set up our thing. We have normal as a, uh, a thing. We have bold and we have italics. I'm going to just go ahead and use, let's go ahead and use bold. Then we're going to put a comma. No, we're not. Sorry, I'm looking at my show notes. I don't use text too much. We're going to go ahead and we just do, we use separate with spaces. We don't actually need commas here. And then we're going to put the size. So let's just go ahead and use 10. And then we're going to put the font. And this we are going to put in quotation notes. So Arial Black. That sounds fun. Hmm. Bold, 10, Arial Black. 
That should really be showing up blue. Let's just see if this works for us. We're going to close that out, and then we're going to go context.fill style. And this is same as anything else you do. Let's just go ahead and use black for now. And then we're going to fill the text. Context.fill text. And here we have our little markup menu. Text is going to be let's say frames per second our x coordinate 0 or y coordinate 0 and we don't have to add a max width because we want it to be able to go as far as it needs to go so that's actually all we need to do for that and it should be drawing up here in the corner So I guess something is not working here. 100. Yeah. That's definitely supposed to be in quotes. Okay, so strangely enough, I actually wasn't doing anything wrong. It was just drawing this in the wrong spot. So I did change this statement a little bit. I put the uh, small quotes at the start and then large quotes over the, the font. It's not 100% necessary. You'll see that it'll work without that. But just so it doesn't get confused. But what I had to do is I had to move the, uh, the Y value down. So it would seem that for this font, at least, if I change this back, you can kind of see there's a little rim of black here. You might not be able to see depending on how this encodes. I'll go ahead and do one so it, it simulates that. You can kind of see it up there. So it draws from the bottom up for some reason, which is not normal for anything in programming. It's something that I might have to look into on my own. But I'll go ahead and throw this down 60 pixels so that we can see it up here. So that's a little large. So I'm going to go ahead and take this down to 10 pixels. That's more like it. Let's do 15 and then let's move this down to 20. And that's more of what we're looking at. Move this over 10. And that's just a little bit of placement. So we get it in a usable place. So now that we have this figured out, we're going to go ahead and we're going to go into timing. And what we're going to be using is we're going to be using date.now for how we determine the time. So in this function, draw the frames per second, we can go ahead and we can, uh, we can put this in here. And this is called by the uh, mouse pause. We are going to put in here our date dot now. So we're going to make some variables first. We're going to have variable last date. We're going to have current date. So for our function FPS, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put an if statement in here. We're going to say if last date does not equal null. We're going to do something with this. We're going to say, we're going to do some math here. We're going to do 
date dot now minus last date equals difference. And we're going to actually split this around. Difference equals date dot now minus last date. And then we need another one. We need frames per second. So frames per second, what I call it? FPS equals difference 1000 divided by difference. So what we're doing is if the original value, if we've gone one frame already, it will go ahead and it'll calculate a new value for frames per second. So that's what this if last date isn't null it's going to run this calculation and we're going to get an FPS. And so in here, we're going to say fill text frame per second. And we're going to concatenate another string here. Plus, we're just going to put a space under here. Space equals space. And then we're going to add on here FPS and we get undefined. Not what we're looking for here. So what are we doing wrong here? Let's go ahead and make sure that this is firing. This is not firing. There's our issue. So if last date does not equal null, we're never writing last date, are we? Tricky, tricky. So after this if last date equals null, and then we get our difference, we're going to go ahead and say last date equals our date dot now. Now we're firing. And that is running a lot of times. That fires every time that we move this. Why it's not getting erased, however, is a good question. I'm thinking that alert is messing with us here. There we go. Yeah, it was just the alert. Alerts can be dangerous sometimes when you're working with in this, but now we have our frames per second. We're getting 20, 30 frames per second. Awesome. So that was really fast. We've already gone through how to include a font, how to render it out. We've talked about how to find frames per second using date.now minus last date. Um, those were the th three things that I was covering. I don't think I said that at the start. In this episode, we're going to cover fonts, timing, and calculator frames per second. I think I did already say that, but if not, I'll just scoot that over to the, the start of this episode. But there you have it. You've got a nice, simple frames per second calculator, and we can play around with this if we want. We can say... Helvetica and it's a different font it's it's as simple as just going ahead and changing that around using Google fonts is another thing that I might cover later but quite frankly our professors having difficulty with it because Google changed some of their procedures so I can't possibly know how to do it if it's changed since the last time I've done it. So, 
yeah, that's that's it for this episode. Nice and quick one. So I'll see you guys later in part five.